with you. Okay, so Jason Kenney's talking point is tone. The tone for the Conservatives went all offside. But I think there's a lot more blind spots than just tone. Why, and you can read about those, but why do you think the Conservatives lost this election so badly? Well, you make a good point, Lauren. There were a number of things, a number of things that the Conservative campaign did not do well and a number of things that the Liberal campaign did very well. And I congratulate uh, Justin Trudeau on a, really a, a great campaign that he ran. Uh, we should keep in mind, you know, some of the, uh, it's been fascinating to see some of the uh, mainstream media reaction, not all, but some of it. It's the, there, there's a euphoric adulation out there that, um, pardon me for using the phrase, but it's almost like a second coming. For now. Uh, which, yeah, for now. And that, will, I, I, that may change. And it is a second coming of, of, uh, of a Trudeau. But keep in mind, in, uh, in 2011, Stephen Harper got 39.6% of the popular vote and he formed a majority. And uh, Justin Trudeau just got 39.5% of the popular vote. He also formed a majority. Okay, but let's, was... let's talk about those tone issues because Mr. Harper's reputation has been left with this label of mean and nasty and that that just kept coming up again and again for the Conservatives to battle. Was it a lack of love in the deep ethos of forming campaign talking points? Well, I can tell you Stephen Harper deeply loves this country and uh, deep, deeply loves uh, the, the people of Canada, but he's got a very different personality. And one of the things that we noticed, and certainly uh, the last month or so of the campaign, I was going door to door with many candidates, and the message I kept sending back to the war, war room was, look, people love the economic message that, the, that the, ba the budget is balanced, the taxes are going down, that we're the strongest in the G20, but th they want some warmth coming through these ads, and they want some warmth from the trail. And I was even saying, you know, think Coca-Cola type ads. And there was Justin Trudeau and the ad campaign uh, with a very different tone. People wanted to hear that, and uh, they weren't hearing it. And that was, that was one of a number of flaws with the campaign. Okay, I, um, I, I can't tell you how many complaints I had over the Conservatives' handling of the refugee crisis. And I felt that was the shot that really distanced the faith community from the Conservatives. What could they have done? differently there? What should they well, it have was, done? Yeah, they needed to keep working at getting the message out that Canada, under the Conservatives, certainly since 2006, has, have had a, an immigration and refugee policy that's even been more generous in terms of bringing people into the country than the previous Liberal years. And this is a message that uh, just was not coming through. The, the security side of the message uh, seemed to be predominant, the fact that we have to be careful about who's coming in, even in emergency situations. So that uh, that clearly was difficult and was not getting through and uh, was one of a number of messages that needed to be worked on along with uh, others that were coming out of the campaign. So Stockwell, there is a lot of warm love in the air. We voted for change. Sunny days ahead, my friends. What is your advice to us now as we charge out into this new future, both as voters but also as political leaders? What would your advice be? My advice would be to keep history in mind. First of all, we all need love in the air, and the more the better. Um, I totally agree with that. Let's remember 1968, Pierre Trudeau won the election, the good majority, on Trudeau mania, and there was a lot of love in the air. Four years later, he barely survived an election. He only beat Robert Stanfield, a very uncharismatic but, but good gentleman, only beat him by two votes. And then when he tried to do what Stephen Herper tried to do, Pierre Trudeau tried to get four in a row. And he was so unloved at that point, he got punted out, and an unknown, uncharismatic guy by the name of Joe Clark, 39 years old, beat him in the election. Stephen Harper tried four in a row, and it didn't work out for him. So let's make sure it's uh, love based on what love is really all about. I'll uh, tell people not to get discouraged if you know they don't feel the love through the airways, and uh, if the economy's turned down. Uh, love cycle starts to turn down also. So, uh, you know, there is a greater love than political love. And let's keep history in mind. Four in a row does not seem to work for anybody. Okay. I do want to ask, though, what social conservatives should do about um, the very big concerns we still carry over what I would call the pro-life agenda in Canada. So now we have legislation that could be done by February that will be a sea change in how we approach death 
and assisting other people in dying. It will um, open a new door, and yet there doesn't seem any place on the political trail to discuss it. What should we do? I'm hoping that uh, Justin Trudeau is sincere when he says he wants to reach out, he wants to listen, and now is going to be the time for uh, people really on any issue, and the one you just mentioned is a key one, to be really exercising their democratic right uh, to meet with their MP, whoever that may be, newly elected or not, and to explain in detail, to share uh, in, in detail what the concerns are, whether it's this, this issue or whatever the issue is. Uh, I do think that uh, Justin Trudeau will uh, do some kind of a public survey on this. And uh, in a democracy, I, I always say you, you won't always get your way, but you should always have your say. And it's up to uh, people of faith and people of goodwill to get out and in a, a clear and in a loving way, make the concern known. No, do it on an MP by MP basis and avail ourselves of the public processes that will also be in place as this item gets discussed from coast to coast. All right. Thank you very much. Thanks for joining us on this uh, blog chat. We really appreciate it. Good to be with you. And we'll look forward to seeing you on our upcoming episode on climate change uh, because of your very interesting involvements with the oil sands in Alberta. So our listeners and viewers can stay tuned for that. Thank you. Thanks for your interest there too.